Hello, everyone. Welcome to Medit's Trainer's Corner. My name is Jennifer Almeida, and I'm a clinical trainer with Medit's Training Education Team. I'm so glad you're joining me today. Today, we're going to be focusing on some features of the Occlusion Analyzer app and how you can use it to help streamline your workflows with your patients. Before we get started, I do want to remind you all that today's webinar is recorded and it will be available on our online education platforms in the future. So you'll be able to find it on our YouTube channel and also on our Medit Academy. If you have any questions, feedback, or suggestions for future topics you'd like us to cover, please feel free to reach out to me here. You can email me at meditedu at medit.com. Again, that's meditedu at medit.com. And my name's Jennifer Almeida. Okay, so if you're not already familiar with the Medit apps, they are an amazing software suite of tools available within your Medit link that can really put you in the driver's seat of digital dentistry. We have apps that can help you and your patients envision treatment plans, design restorations, models, splints, analyze data. Today, we're gonna to be focusing on the Occlusion Analyzer app. If you're not familiar with how to download the Medit apps, you can do so within your Medit Link desktop application. You're going to locate the app box icon on the left side toolbar. And then when you're within the app box, you can download whatever app you would like to utilize. You'll, for this particular case, you can download the Occlusion Analyzer app by locating it and then clicking that blue button to install within your Medit Link. All right, so the Occlusion Analyzer app was designed to help streamline the routine process of analyzing your patient's occlusion. The app's going to show you um, interferences between the patient's upper and lower jaws. And it's also gonna provide additional tools that can help you really take a deep dive into analyzing your patient's bite. We're all familiar with the analog way of using articulating paper, but with digital, we can do so much more. The app's gonna give us the ability to really do some precise measurements, take really good uh, key detail looks at how your patient's occluding, and just overall help be a better patient um, communicator when it comes to talking about occlusion and treatment options. Other things this app might help you with, they can be helping you with designing prostheses, so crowns and bridges, checking that the occlusion is proper, or also tracking your patient pre, during, and post-orthodontic treatment. This app can really show you some great data. All right, so my plan today is I'm going to just give you some gentle tips over um, occlusion scans. We're going to talk a little bit about some things to look out for. Then we're gonna get into the app and some of its key features. And then I have some case examples for you. So first things first, let's talk about tips when it comes to actually taking our patient's scans. We wanna make sure that we get good data. And one of the things we wanna be looking out for is to make sure that we're not getting any saliva bubbles on the occlusal surface of the patient's teeth before we scan. This will impact how that data is processed by the scanner. And it can lead to issues when you actually go to uh, analyze the patient's occlusion. So make sure you're drying the patient's teeth before you're scanning. Other things we should be looking out for, make sure you're filling in the holes, especially on the buccal surface of your scans. You really want those teeth well captured as well as at least four to five millimeters of the attached tissue. This is gonna help give the, the software the proper data, proper reference data it needs as it goes to put your patient's bite scan together. Also too, if you're capturing soft tissue in your scans, this may lead to an issue as you go to register the patient's occlusion. So if you're familiar with the smart scan filtering, typically most cases can um, stay at the default, which is just filtering for teeth and gingiva. It'll help prevent that soft tissue from being captured in your scan. But if you are finding that you're getting maybe some of the posterior buccal tissue captured in the scan, just use your trim tools to race it out Good arch scans are gonna to lead to good bite scans for you. Also, if you're doing full arch scans, it is best to get a bilateral buckle bite. When you're in the occlusion scan and medit scan for clinics, you'll see on the bottom toolbar that there will be two bite scans. So just ensuring that we're getting a bilateral bite if we're doing full scans. Also, when you're doing your bite scan, 
try to remember to keep your patient seated upright. And I like to suggest that after you have the patient bite down, give them a few seconds, let that PDL fiber kind of settle before you turn your scanner on, start capturing your bite. You could also scan the other side while the patient is still biting. So that way they keep that bite without having to open up and try to replicate that same bite again. Okay, let's get into the software and check out some of the features that you can use. Okay, so here I am in my MediLink desktop application within my patient scan. And you'll see here on the top, I have this assortment of icons here. And these are all the apps I have downloaded and installed through this, this app box icon here previously. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna locate the icon for the Occlusion Analyzer app, which will be right here and click it once to begin. When the app loads, it's gonna give me this option window here where I can click this button if I'd like to learn more about the app or I can choose to just continue working. If I click on this, learn more about the app button, a browser window will load and it will be automatically directing me to Meta Academy where there'll be a course that I could choose to enroll for free if I'd like to learn more about the application. If I chose instead to click on the continue working button, it's gonna bring me to this dialog box here where I'm gonna assign the data I'd like to bring into the app. To run the Occlusion Analyzer app, we need at least one upper scan, a lower scan, and at least one bite scan. And then you'll see here on the left-hand side, any additional scans you have associated with the case, whether you took additional scans in MedicScan for Clinics or you imported scans into the patient's case, those two will be available. So if I'd like to bring in the STL from my free mandible scan, I could select it here and then just click the appropriate arrow to bring it into the right area before I import into the case. Once I have the data assigned as needed, I'm gonna click this blue confirm button to continue. And right away, the software is gonna bring me into this automatic occlusion analysis mode. And what we're seeing here is a color heat map with any uh, occlusal interferences between the patient's upper and lower. And then you will see the overlapping amount displayed here. You'll also notice with the color heat map, it corresponds with this color bar key down here on the bottom left. And if I click this arrow, this is gonna expand out the values for those colors. Something I think that is really cool, you can go in and edit these if you choose to do so. So if I just double click on any of these values here, it'll give me the option to edit how this heat map is displaying. If I want to do a more detailed analysis, I'm going to click on this blue examine reported areas and it's going to take me to this multi-panel section view of all those areas where the software automatically detected some occlusal interferences. And as you'll notice here too, each panel has a color and that color is going to correspond with the appropriate cross-sectional view. And I can use my mouse here and I can use my scroll wheel and just zoom in and then press and hold on the scroll wheel to pan my scan. And then if I grab the edge of the panel and left click and hold, I can drag and scroll this and you'll see a dynamic view in the appropriate cross-sectional panel here. If you'd like to make any adjustments to how the panel is slicing the patient's data, you could do that easily too. So if I right click now and rotate my scan, you'll see there's these little spheres on the edges of each panel. And if I grab those spheres, they're gonna do different things. So if I grab the spheres here on either the buccal or lingual areas of the panel, I can rotate the panel and you'll see that it's gonna change that cross-sectional view. Or if I grab the spheres that are above or below and left click and hold, you'll see that we can tilt this panel here as needed as well. If I did anything I didn't intend to do and I want to undo that action, we have our undo redo buttons here on the bottom left. So if I click the undo button, that's gonna undo any changes I made with repositioning my panel. If I wanna leave this automatic multi-section view, I can click this little door icon at the bottom to exit. And it's gonna take me out to a main working area here. 
And you're going to see that we still have all of our panels displayed from our automatic detection, but we'll only have now just one panel view. But you can still cycle through all the different sections here. You'll see in the toolbar here on the uh, section view, there's some arrows. And if I click these arrows, it's going to bring me through all the different section panels we have. If I want to delete any of the panels, really easy to do so. I'm just going to click on the little trash icon right above them, and that's going to remove them from my working view here. And then you'll see here on the top right-hand corner, we're going to have some additional tools if we'd like to do some uh, manipulation. You'll see we'll have this icon here where we could switch the view. So if I click this, this is going to open my patient's upper and lower so I can see that heat map on both of the arches at the same time. If I want to turn off and on the color heat map, I can toggle this button here to turn the color map off and on. Or if I'd like to change this so that we're just looking at contact areas only, I'm going to click this icon here right in the middle, and that's going to switch my display. So now we're just seeing just areas where the patient is contacting. And if I click it once more, we'll bring the full color map back on. If I want to add any manual panels myself, I could do so easily right here in this tool selection window. If I click on this icon to add a section plane, it's going to give me this yellow plane and I can just scroll right through the patient's data here and then just left click if there's any particular area I'd like to take a closer look at. I can also go back out to my multi-section view as well really easily. If I click on this multi-view icon, it's going to bring me out and it's going to show me up to four selections that I have made. And if I'm ready to exit, I'm just going to click on this exit button on the bottom. Okay. If for whatever reason you want to go back to the automatic analysis, automatic section, we're going to click this button here and we're going to get a warning. It's going to let us know any manual panels that we had placed. They are going to be deleted. And if we just click on the blue continue button, you're going to see, we're going to see all those panels where the software had automatically detected any occlusal interferences reappearing now. The next tool I'm going to show you is the show hide section view. If I click this button once, what we're going to see is it's going to show exactly where that patient's data is being intersected and give us some lines through the 3D data there. If I click that button one more time, it's going to hide all my panel views. And if I click it once more, it's going to bring those panels back up. Another tool you'll find here for your use will be this dynamic clipping option. So if we click this, we're going to see that our patient 3D data um, disappears and we get one panel. And now if I left click and drag this panel, I'm going to get a dynamic view of the slicing of that patient's data. And you'll see here as I scroll, I left click and hold and pull this through, it's gonna split right at the midline for me. And that's because at the bottom here, I have this option selected, which is auto directing, which is gonna break at the midline. But if I wanna change this, I have some options. So if I click on right clipping only and left click and hold, it's gonna keep the patient's right side data for me. Or if I click on the left clipping only, and then left click and drag this panel, it's gonna keep the patient's left data for me. And to turn this option off, I'm just gonna come back to my tools here and toggle this off. One other tool that you have available in the occlusion analyzer here would be to reset the arch line if needed. If I click on this icon, it's gonna bring me to this screen here. And I have the ability to place three dots on the patient's arch if I'd like to retrace the patient's arch line. So if I select an area in the posterior, an area in the interior, and then another area in the posterior, it's gonna reshape that arch line for me if I choose to do so. If I don't like the arch line that I have drawn, I can easily go back to a previously set arch line by clicking this button at the bottom to reset. And then I can click the door icon to exit. Okay, some other things you're gonna see here that can be very helpful when you're in the app. On the bottom right here, we have our data tree. 
So this is all the data that we assigned to bring into the case. And I can click the eyeball icons to turn off and on these scans as necessary. I can also hover over and get the slider bar and change the opacity as needed as well as I'm analyzing this particular case. Some other great things, there's subtools which within these cross-sectional views. And if I wanna make this cross-sectional view larger, right now it's pinned, I can't move it, I can't change too much with it. I can click on this little double square icon here, and this is gonna bring up a resized triangle for me on the bottom right. So now I can left click, drag this window out, grab this little triangle icon and really pull this out and now, as I cycle through, let's pretend we wanna look at the area here with uh, number two and number 31 occluding. I'm gonna cycle through, I'm gonna find that purple panel. Here we go. And now within this window, if I choose to do so, I can turn on a 3D view. And then using my mouse, I can also right click, rotate. If I come out into my main working area, left click and drag, I can move this panel. I can turn on a grid view here. This is gonna give me some measurements in millimeters. And then I could also, if I'd like to do some uh, measurements directly within this cross-sectional window, I could choose to measure by one point, where if I click on one area 3D data, it's going to measure to the nearest area for me, or I can choose to do a uh, alignment by two points here, where if I click on one area 3D data and then a double a, a click on the next area, it's gonna give me another measurement here. If I need to delete any of these measurements, really easy. I'm gonna click on the trash icon and then I'm gonna hover over the measurement. I like to delete and just left click once and that's gonna remove it from that area. If I wanna bring this cross-sectional view back to its original pinned location, I'm just gonna click on the square icon here and it's gonna bring it back up for me. All right, now I'm gonna go on to the left toolbar here. This is where we can assign modes as we're working within the main working area. This top one here, reassign data, if I click on this, this is gonna bring me out to that original area where I can select what data I want brought into the application. So if I, at this point, wanna bring in maybe my free mandible scan, I can just select it here on the left, click the arrow and then click to confirm to bring it back in. I also have the ability here too, if I wanna go back to that automatic analysis mode that first launched when I opened the application, I could do that really easily. So if I click on this icon here, it's gonna give me a little warning. It's gonna tell me any manual planes that I had placed are gonna be deleted when I hit this automatic analysis. So it's just let me know that before we continue. So if we're okay, we're gonna say continue and we're gonna see we're right back to the original area where we started, where we're getting those automatic detections and then some of the overlapping amounts. Also too, if you need to go in and make any adjustments to the alignment of your patient scans, you can do that in the alignment mode here. So if I click on this icon, it's gonna give me a couple options where I can choose to either align this data based on um, any type of selection that you make, or I can align the data based on manual alignment. You could also choose to change your alignment target based on your scans or adjust any type of compensation for the scans if needed. The next mode here is the edit mode. And if we click on this icon here, we're gonna see we have some tools that are gonna pop up right within the application where we can edit the patient's scans if needed. You'll see that you'll have an icon where you can utilize the trimming tool to remove any maybe soft tissue or anything else in the skin that you don't want present. You could also have a tool to help you fill in any holes as well as some sculpting tools here if you'd like to do any changes to any type of files that you bring into the scan. This next one here, mandibular movement mode. This is probably my favorite mode in this application. And if we had taken a mandibular movement scan of our patient when we were scanning our patient in MeditScan for clinics, we can bring that movement scan into the seclusion analyzer and it can really help us get a great view of what's happening as our patient is occluding. 
I'm going to come in here. I'm going to turn on my section view and I'm going to bring out a manual panel here and I'm just going to place it right here by number two and number 31 because that's an area of interest for me. And you'll see here I have that pinned view. And now also in this mandibular movement mode, I have any free or lateral um, excursion uh, scans I took and medit scan for clinics. And at the bottom, I have a little player here. And I'm going to turn on the looping mode by clicking this little loop, and then I'm going to hit play. And now what we're seeing is a dynamic view of how this patient is occluding when they're going into excursive movements, protrusive movements. I can come into my data tree here. I can choose to bring the opacity down on my upper here. And this gives us a phenomenal really great view of what's going on with our patient as they are occluding. And then if I grab this panel and left click on the edge, I could actually change the area I'm looking at dynamically as this patient is in their mandibular movement here. Again, a little reminder, if I want to blow up this little cross-sectional view, I'm going to click on this little square icon and that can help me do so. So I'm just going to hit the little stop button here just to pause our scan. And then last but not least, you're gonna see this little check mark on the folder here. This is the complete section. So if I had made any changes to any of my scans, maybe trimmed off some soft tissue, maybe re-sculpted some type of restoration, I can choose to save that data by clicking this and it's gonna save it to my Medit link. All right. One last thing I want to show you all before I wrap up with the features you're going to find in the occlusal analyzer. Anytime I'm within a certain mode on the app here, if I click this little eye icon on the bottom, it's going to launch a web browser for me that's going to take me to more information about that particular mode if I would like to learn more information about it. And then also here, you'll see on the top toolbar, there's this little book icon, and this is the help center. So if I click this, this is gonna bring me to the Medit help center where it's gonna have a lot of information about this particular app, and I can click through and learn a little more if need be. Okay, let's take a look at some case examples together now. So here we have just your, your basic consultation case. This could be a new or an existing patient in your clinic where after you acquire some intraoral photos and some intraoral scans, you can bring their data into the Occlusion Analyzer app and it can be a really phenomenal patient education tool. It's gonna help us identify areas of tight occlusion. As you're seeing in this case here, this patient has a distal marginal ridge fracture on number 31. And when we run the patient's mandibular movement scan in the Occlusion Analyzer app, we can see those areas of tight occlusion. So we can identify areas that may be harmful for the patient's natural dentition or their crown and bridge work. This is also very helpful too when we're coming up with a treatment plan for these patients, just having this data to try to inform not only the treatment plan, but also educate the patient on why treatment is important. My next example I have here is if you have a patient that has um, a cone beam and you're able to export their cone beam data segmented in STL format, you're able then to bring in that STL, those STL files into your Medit link software, where then you can merge it with your patient's oral scans. And this can be a really helpful tool when you're trying to do a deeper dive analysis on a patient's TMJ situation. When we run the mandibular movement scan here, we're going to get a sense of how that uh, condyle is uh, operating in the patient's glenoid fossa. I know in this particular case, this uh, segmented data does not have the, the fossa of the um, of the upper here, but even without it, we're still getting a pretty good overview of what might be happening with this particular patient. We can use our tools such as turning down the opacity in the, the data tree here and really just get a good overall idea of what might be going on for this particular patient. All right, my next example here is when we can use the data to help us protect our patient's investments. And in this particular case, this patient is having uh, implant restoration 
on uh, number 14, and then we have crowns on 12 and 13. And when we run the occlusion analyzer app here, and we're checking the patient's data, we're checking to see if there's any interferences here that, that might be harmful for this new um, restorative work our patients are investing in. And when we run the, the data, which is centric occlusion, we see that there's no interference, but if we bring in data from the mandibular movement scan with our lateral excursions, we're seeing here on the buccal cusp of 13 there that the patient is hitting pretty hard and this might impact the longevity of that restoration. So the app can really help us here to make some adjustments as needed to help protect our patient's dentition. My next example here is how we can use the app to adjust any uh, CAD created data. In this particular case, we use the Medit Temporaries app to make eggshell crowns for 14 and 15. And when we bring that data into the software, we can actually make adjustments to those, those CAD design crowns so that we're making sure we're getting the ideal crown for our patient. So when we bring the crown in and we run the app here, we can see that there might be some areas of interference. So now within the occlusal analyzer app, we can go and use our tools to adjust this crown design. So after we make a cross-sectional view, we're then going to bring open our edit tools on the left-hand side here. And we can use the sculpt tools here. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna remove a bit of the area right on the occlusal of that crown where the patient may potentially hit high and maybe fracture the restoration. So just by adjusting the brush strength, the brush size, we can go in and just make some slight adjustments to the design of this crown here. And then by scrolling through the cross-sectional view, we can make sure that we have the appropriate data for the whole case. We'll go back, adjust there on 15, right on the occlusal there. And we can see it right in the cross-sectional view. It's gonna take that little bit of area of interference right out of our crown design. Okay, that is all I have for you guys this evening. Thank you so much for joining me. Please feel free to reach out if you have any questions, comments, suggestions for future topics. We are open ears here on the Medit Education team, so please feel free to reach out to us here at meditedu at medit.com. Thank you so much and have a great day.